Lord be with you. Welcome to worship today. Number of announcements as we begin. Uh, first of all, if you see Ted and Shirley Mangus, wish them a happy 60th wedding anniversary. Um, and uh, they were here last evening at Saturday worship, and so we uh, we honored them there. And uh, you know, they've been a, a a wonderful example of Christian love and uh, of the kingdom of God here at Zion. And so uh, greet them, greet them when you can. Uh, also today, uh, we have been blessing, uh, continuing to bless and pray for those who are preparing for their baptism at the great vigil of Easter. And that, of course, includes Mike Anderson, Joyce Sturr, Megan Suters, Abigail Gold, Thomas Clemens, and Isabel Goss. And so uh, we'll have them come up after the hymn of the day today and uh, for, receive another blessing. And uh, make sure that you're there for their baptism at the Great Vigil of Easter this year. During Lent, we have worship on Wednesdays at either 9 a.m. or 7 p.m. I'm working on my, through my sermon series on uh, the longings of the heart. And this Wednesday, the theme of my preaching will be the hunger for peace. Uh, so come out for that. If you're coming to the 7 o'clock uh, liturgy, uh, hold an evening prayer, then you could also... Uh, uh, join us for our soup and sandwich dinner at 6 o'clock, and that's always a welcome, uh, welcome time because we, uh, we get to, to eat and then worship together. Uh, the, our middle school and high school youth group is meeting today. They're going to have a great uh, bake-off challenge, which sounds like a lot of fun. Um, I know we did a uh, sort of a um, Iron Chef thing a couple years ago, and it turned out really great. So... Uh, come to the Bake Off today, or, uh, and we always invite people to bring friends. Uh, and this is the last day to buy altar flowers, so if you'd like to beautify our nave uh, for the celebration of Easter, please, please get those altar flower orders in. Finally, uh, I've included in our bulletin this week our, our prayer list, and every once in a while we, we go through the prayer list and we look through it and see who we'd like to keep on. If you see somebody's name that you'd definitely like to keep on, circle that and uh, also make sure your name is on the sheet so that we, uh, we know who is asking for prayers for them. And then if, if you see that uh, a name can be removed at this point in time, you could just put a line through that name. Uh, and so if you would help us tend that prayer sheet that way, that would be great. Also, you could take that prayer sheet home and lift up those people in prayer in your own prayer time. Are there any other announcements? If not, we begin with our confession. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Returning to the covenant God made with us in holy baptism, let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. We begin by remembering the Lord's commandments. I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant, or his maidservant, or his cattle, or anything that is your neighbor's. Faithful God, we have sinned against you by turning away from your grace and mercy. We have broken your commandments, neglected to serve others in your name, and have sought our own security rather than the well-being of all your creation. Deliver us from our selfish ways and restore us to the joy of your salvation. May God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Lord The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of all mercy, by your power to heal and to forgive, graciously cleanse us from all sin and make us strong through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt, and so that place is called Gilgal to this day. While the Israelites were camped in Gilgal, they kept the Passover in the evening on the fourteenth day of the month in the plains of Jericho. On the day after the Passover, on that very day, they ate the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grains. The manna ceased on the day they ate the produce of the land, and the Israelites no longer had manna. They ate the crops of the land of Canaan that year. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mercy, mercy, mercy embraces those who trust in transgressions are forgiven and whose sin is put away. Happy are they to whom the Lord imputes no guilt and in whose spirit there is no guile. While I held my tongue, my bones withered away because of my groaning all day long. For your hand was heavy upon me day and night. My moisture was dried up 
as in the heat of summer. Mercy, mercy, mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my guilt. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Then you forgave me the guilt of my sin. Therefore all the faithful will make their prayers to you in time of trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not reach them. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. Mercy, mercy, mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like horse and mule which have no understanding. Who must be fitted with bit and bridle, or else they will not stay near you. Great are the tribulations of the wicked, but mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy, all who are true of heart. Mercy, mercy. Mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. A reading from 2 Corinthians. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God, we was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are, am, am, we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life, may have eternal The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out 
to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am, dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate, for the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field. And when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has got him back, safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to In the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of God, the love of God that comes to each of us, that's what keeps our lives going. God, through the Holy Spirit, fills us with his love, and that's what animates us in this life, and that's what allows us to live and to love God and one another. And our gospel lesson for today is a is an amazing picture of this grace, this love of God that gets poured upon us, uh, this mercy of God that always receives us. This parable is, is, that we see today is often known as the, the king of all parables. It's the greatest parable. It's the one that shows uh, God's great love that fills us. This parable that Jesus tells is often, is often called the, the parable of the prodigal son. Uh, many, however, think this story has come down through the centuries misnamed. Uh, it's, it's got the wrong name. It's not the prodigal son. Do you know what the word prodigal means? It means uh, free spending or maybe wastefully spending. Um, it's it's uh, basically spending everything. It's, it's being very loose and free with your money. But this is more than a story about a son who misused the family fortune once he got his, his mitts on it, uh, who went prodigal and, and went on a wild spending spree. The parable should really be named the parable of the prodigal father, because it was the father that was free spending with his love and his forgiveness and with his welcome home. So, when we look at the parables, we, we, often look at them, uh, we often look at them wrong. We get the wrong things from them. 
we often want to interpret the parables thinking that there's some sort of a little, a little moral teaching within the story that we are supposed to apply to our lives. And, and yes, that may be true, but when Jesus tells a parable, he is more concerned with telling us the truth about the character of God the Father and the nature of God's kingdom. So yes, this story is filled with many truths concerning our Christian pilgrimage here on earth. And, and I'll go over a few of those truths that we can apply to ourselves. But the focus of this story doesn't really lie with the prodigal son or with the jealous elder son. But uh, the, the true impact of the story lies with this amazing father. So let's see what kind of a man this father is. Uh, we can see right at the beginning of this parable one of the characteristics of this father. His younger son comes to him knowing that one day, one third of the family fortune will be his. Right? Um, uh, we, we call that expression looking for a dead man's shoes, right? <laughs> but you're never supposed to look for a dead man's shoes. So instead of waiting for his father to die to receive the inheritance, he asks for his share now. Can you believe that? Can you imagine that? He, it's, he goes to his father and says, Dad, you know, you're as good as dead to me, so why don't, we, why don't you give me the money that you were going to give me now anyhow? Wow, how would you react to that? <laughs> I don't think it would go over real well with a son or a daughter. Um, incredibly, the father says yes. He divides the family fortune. Now, the, the older son, by law, receives two-thirds, and the younger son receives... Uh, just a third of the family fortune. But already we see the love and the patience of the father. You know, he could have ordered his son to stay at home. He could have refused, refused to give him a, that share. Um, you know, how would we have responded? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll get, right, I'll get right to that. Yep, I'll give you your fortune. Are you kidding me? <laughs> get back in the fields. you got work to do. That's the way we would respond, right? We wouldn't do this. But... This father, he respects his son's desire uh, to experience independence, to forge his own identity. So even though his wisdom and his experience tells him that this son's going to face some dangers out there, um, he goes ahead and lets him have his experience. Uh, he, he knows that he's going to learn firsthand and learn the hard way that life is more than grabbing all you can get. So... Amazingly, he hands over the fortune and he lets his son go. While at home, the father and the elder son continue to manage the family farm. But the father, what's he doing while his son is away? He's, he's constantly waiting and watching and wondering how his younger son is doing. And uh, we know that this is what he's doing because... It's how he responds when the son finally comes home. You know what he's practicing in his heart? This father, in his heart and in his mind, he's, he's practicing uh, hugging and kissing and welcoming his son home. That's his greatest desire, that he can get his son home and hug him and kiss him and, and give him a big party. And, and he, he's doing that. We know he's doing that because that's what he does when the son comes home. What you rehearse, you get back, Right? And so if he was rehearsing what we would probably do, which is a good lecture <laughs> and, uh, and punishing him, if he, was re if he was rehearsing that inside of him, that's what he would have done when he came home. But no, he's, re he's rehearsing something else, a big welcome. And so um, the father shows us a different way. <laughs> you know, think about it. When we re uh, what do we rehearse in our hearts when we have a conflict with someone? You know, how we're going to argue back with them, make our case, prove ourselves right, right punish them verbally. If we do that, that's what we're going to get back when we see them. But this father, he shows us a different way to be. So finally, after a long wait, the day finally comes, the younger son returns. And the father sees him in the distance walking down the road, you know, making a turn at the mailbox, coming up the lane to the house, and he leaves his front porch. This, this father runs down the, the lane to meet his son. Now, this is something that an elderly Jewish man would never do. 
They don't run. That would be, um, that would be a disgrace. Uh, they're too dignified for that. But the father, he drops his dignity, um, just like he did it when he gave his son the, son the inheritance. And he, he lets that all go because of, of, of love for his son. He goes running down the lane. And before his, his son can even get out this well-rehearsed speech, he, he hugs him, he spins him around, he gives him a big kiss, and he welcomes him home. Although the, the son had hit rock bottom in his life, this father lifts him up again. Although the boy had stupidly and selfishly squandered his inheritance, the father welcomed him back home. Although this boy actually disowned his family, uh, disgraced his father, his father restored his membership into the family and accepted his lost son. What an amazing thing this father did. It shows his character. That's the character of the God, the Father in heaven as well. Uh, I read that a few years ago, a nationwide poll asked this question. What word or phrase would you most like to hear uttered to you sincerely? Now think about that for a moment. What word or phrase would you most like to hear uttered to you sincerely? Uh, can you guess the first thing that, that, that people wanted to hear? Number one, not really unexpectedly here, number one was, I love you. Isn't it wonderful when somebody sincerely says to you, I love you? It fills our heart with gladness, doesn't it? Now, the second word or phrase that most people would like to hear uttered sincerely was this. You are forgiven. All of us have our faults. All of us have our problems, our conflicts with other people. Isn't it wonderful when, when you have given a sincere apology and somebody says to you, I forgive you. you know? um, what, a, what a wonderful thing to hear from somebody else. I forgive you. It's like a walk in the sunshine to know that they are really saying, I put this behind us, let's start new. Um, folks, you have, that, uh, you have the ability to do that, to sincerely forgive somebody, so offer that gift just as often as you can. Now, I love you, you are forgiven. Uh, what word or phrase would you most like to hear uttered to you sincerely? This is the first two. The third one uh, you might never expect, but it was this. Supper is ready. <laughs> Supper is ready. You know, I, I really related to this one. I do a, a lot of the cooking and making dinner in my own household. And, uh, you know, I, I love the feeling of being able to, after you know, after shopping, planning a meal, doing the cooking, getting it all together, putting it all on the table and saying, supper is ready. I, I love the reaction that my family has. Well, first of all, the dog reacts because <laughs> the dog knows he gets fed after we do. So he grabs his bone and he's the first one under the table. Uh, but then after that, you know, my, my wife comes into the dining room. My kids come wandering down wherever they've been holding up, you know, in their rooms upstairs, whatever. And Oh, it smells good. What's for dinner? You know, and they come, everybody sits around, and what a wonderful thing to welcome my family around the table. Supper is ready, and I know that you know whenever somebody prepares a, a dinner for me, to hear those words is just a a wonderful thing. Um, think about this. In his actions, the father in the story said all three. He said, "I love you." He said, "I forgive you," and he said, "Supper's ready." Think about this. Um, every week we get invited to the Lord's Supper. This is the Father's Supper. And he says, supper is ready. If we as human beings can rejoice, you know, when we've invited people, we say supper is ready and, and we're glad at the responses we get. Imagine what our Father in Heaven feels like when, when we gather around his table. How glad the Father is. How he rejoices with the angels and the hosts in Heaven uh, about our returning every week to his table. Oh, the Father loves that. He loves our response to supper is ready. So that's, that's the response of the Father to this wayward son. I love you, you're forgiven, supper's ready. Now, now also notice how the Father treats uh, the elder son. 
You know, this son was jealous. He, he stayed home apparently begrudgingly, not because he wanted to, be, because he felt it was his duty to do that. He had to do it. So when the younger brother comes home and he receives all of this attention, well, he gets angry. He gets jealous. You know, he's out there pouting in the fields, and uh, the servant has to go and say, oh, uh, your older son's really angry at you. So um, the father goes out, you know, and there's, you, they can hear in the distance the, the party going on. You know, he goes out to his older son. And, uh, and by the way, notice that this parable says, you know, there was a man who had two sons. This parable is also about a man who went out to two sons. He went out to two sons who, who were really far away from him. Think about that. Um, this son was really, this elder son, although he lived at home, was really as far away from his father as the younger son was. In his heart, he was, he was, he was jealous. He was angry. He was far away too. But, you know, he says to his dad when his dad finally gets out there, you've never had a barbecue for me, dad. You know, you never invited my friends over and rolled up the carpet and cranked up the stereo, let us dance and have a big party. We never got that at all. Yeah. But the father, what's he do? He doesn't rebuke him or ignore him. Rather, he reminds him of all the blessing they had shared together in their joint ownership of all that is mine. He reminds the elder son that he had the privilege and the opportunity to share in everything while the younger brother was away. The father also reminds him that the fortune really is still his. He's not going to be left out. Rather, his future is assured. So, that's what we know about the father. A marvelous uh, father in heaven is what Jesus is pointing to. But the natural thing also is for us to apply the truths of this parable to our lives. And at the same time, we need to remember, you know, we need to remember that this really points to the Father. But how do we apply it? Okay, let's think about that too. Well, one thing we might come to understand from this parable is that God does give us the freedom to use his gifts the way we want to use them. God gives generously to us. He gives the wealth of his kingdom because we are his sons and daughters. God gives to us knowing that, that we need to make some difficult decisions about how we will use those gifts. The big question for us is this. Will we use them to honor and glorify God by serving other people? It's always the big question. Will we use what God has given us to honor and glorify God by serving other people? Or are we going to use those, those gifts just for ourselves? Notice how Jesus portrays the Father in this parable. He, he gives to us freely, no strings attached. He lets us use our own judgment on how we will respond to this generosity. God gives to each of us a, a large portion of, of his wealth, his kingdom, his resources. He gives us um, our very lives, our talents, our personalities. And he says, here, these are yours. Do with them as you can for my world. And some folks use God's gifts to honor and glorify God and, and, and love their neighbor as they love themselves. And, and other folks use those gifts to glorify themselves. The father of the parable knew of the inherent risk of giving the son part of the fortune that he demanded. But he also knew the son had to assume some responsibility for his own actions. In the same way, God gives freely to us. And he knows there are risks involved. And some will use those gifts to benefit other people and serve God and others will use those gifts to benefit really just themselves but God is willing to take that risk with each and every one of us also notice that in this business of risking his good creation into our hands God also waits patiently for us if we do not use those gifts uh, well if we use them for our selfish ends he waits patiently for us to return to him Jesus pictures Humankind is always having the opportunity, always having the chance to change, to turn from honoring self to honoring God. And, and the phrase that tells us that this is true in, in the parable is, but when he came to himself. That means that, that when the younger son sitting in a, in a pigsty, <laughs> uh, 
which was, by the way, that was rock bottom for a Jew. Um, a famine, a pigsty, nothing to eat. When he came to himself, when he realized what he was doing, when he realized he was honoring himself, trying to glorify himself instead of God, when he realized that he was being less than what God created him to be, when he realized he was sitting in need of forgiveness, when he came to himself, he also remembered his kind father. He remembered the, the love his father had for him. He remembered how compassionate and caring his father had been to him and even to all of the servants that worked for the father. All of them had bread and enough uh, to share. And he decided to return home and be with him. And you might say that this change of mind was the work of the Holy Spirit, reminding him of the goodness of his father. It's what the Spirit does for us, always reminds us that we've got a marvelous, loving God, loving Father. When each of us stray, when we use God's gifts to honor and glorify ourselves instead of him, God hopes one day we will return to him. The Holy Spirit reminds us that the Father is gracious. He will be there waiting with open arms to welcome us back home. When we fail, when we fall, when we get caught up in the idolatry of self, God is still there waiting for us to return to him. He's still there waiting for us to seek him, to experience his love, to be covered over with his robe of righteousness, to, to wear the ring of his family, the, uh, the, the body of Christ, the shoes of walking in his footsteps the rest of our lives. God never writes anyone off. He knows that his love, his kindness, and forgiveness can change anyone. And at the same time, for those who, of us who are still at home, for those who have used God's gifts to glorify him, who have served faithfully these many years, God says to you, all that I have is yours. I am sharing now with you a foretaste, a, a part of my kingdom. Your salvation is secure. Help me now. Help me to celebrate with those who are coming back. Help me to bring those who have strayed back into my fold. Help me be that good shepherd. Serve me here at home out of love, not out of a sense of duty. Serve as generously as I have blessed you. We can learn much from this parable. We see in this parable the astounding quality of God, the Father's love for us. And we know that Jesus, he is the bridge over which we prodigals return home. By his death and resurrection, he leads us back home. Through him, we know that the Father is watching for us. And for those of us who are like the older brother, awaiting the arrival of returning sisters and brothers, it is again Jesus and his love which enables us to receive and to welcome them. We always want to echo those beautiful words, I love you. You are forgiven, and supper is ready. Amen.
forward, those who are preparing for their baptism at the great vigil of Easter. So, as the prodigal son abandoned his life of sin and returned to the joy of the Father, so the church, empowered by the Spirit, renounces the power of evil in the world. Let us join with saints and angels to pray that God will expose the devil's empty promises and flood the world with his light. So let us pray. Lord God, you promised that the ancient evil of the serpent would be vanquished on the cross of your Son. We ask you crush the power of the devil. Protect your people from the evils of the world. Preserve us from sin and error, that with saints and angels we may live in the joy of your goodness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us now bless Michael and Joyce on this day, and let us raise our hands in a prayer of blessing for them. So let us pray. Merciful and most high God, creator and life giver of all that is, who called all people from darkness into light, from error into truth, from death into life, we ask you grant grace to Michael, Joyce, Megan, Abigail, Thomas, and Isabel, and bless them. Raise them by your spirit, revive them by your word, form them by your hand, bring them to the water of life, to the bread and cup of blessing, that with all your people they may bear witness to your grace and praise you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So God bring you the peace and joy to the day of your baptism, to fullness of life in Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's all respond together. Blessed, Blessed be God who chose you in Christ. Christ. Live in love as Christ loved us. As they return to their places, we will pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, for all people according to their needs. God, our Deliverer, you led the ancient Israelites through the wilderness into the promised land and provided for their needs. We praise and thank you for your deliverance from that which is dangerous and harmful to us. And in gratitude, we acknowledge your generous provision for our needs. Lord, in your mercy, God of new creation and reconciliation, we praise and thank you that in Christ we are a new creation and made righteous through his saving work of reconciling us and the world to himself. Help us to be faithful ambassadors for Christ in the world by being reconciled to God and seeking reconciliation among all peoples. Lord, in your mercy. God of peace, you alone can give us lasting peace. In a world filled with sin, conflicts, and wars, we name before you the war between Russia and Ukraine. Be with the leaders of all nations, including ours. Grant them humble and repentant hearts that they may turn to you for wisdom and guidance and pursue the way of peace. We pray for the victims of this war. We pray that you would receive those who have died into your loving arms, that you would heal the wounded, that you would comfort the grieving, and that you would be with all of those who have fled for their own safety, that they may find homes. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Most loving, patient, and forgiving God, you seek, find, save, and celebrate with the lost and prodigal of this world. Encourage us to rejoice always as your children, to receive endless love, patience, and forgiveness. Help us to be the ones who bring the lost to your table, and to your supper. Lord, in your mercy, we 
pray, Almighty God, for your love and your healing power to be among those whom we name before you, those who need a great measure of your spirit and your, res- and your restoration. Bobby and Jeanette Calhoun, Leroy and Ruth Kotner, Bev Heverly, Irene Watson, Bob Shetler, Shirley Mengus, Joyce Osman, Jim Yost, Charlie Wright, Mike Benford, Lucille Huffman, Harold Raup, Lily Brooks, Marianne Ott, Sally and Al Kaufman, Donna Bridges, Deb Bryson, Eileen Montgomery, Catherine Mingle, Jason Gamian, Harvey Demi, Tracy Onks, Derek Kotner, Dolores Brennan, Andrew Bieber, Susan Grube, Sean, Ronnie Johnston, Sandy Raybert, Jeff Grube, George Edwards, Candace Lumley, Stan Schaefer, Michael Kenny, Shannon Wetzel, Chris Bolt, Randy Ulmer, Janice Knauer, Lori Yost, Kathy Hillard, Tammy Wands, Helen Nyhard, Donna Fisher, Dorothy Anderson, uh, Russ Wynn, Stephanie Smith, Carol Crawford, Craig Kling, Rosa Kuhn, Sandy Fairman, all those that we name now out loud before you. Grant them a great measure of your spirit, your healing. We also lift up before you those who have died in faith, Carol Shiflett, and many others. We entrust them to your care and ask that you would comfort their families with the promise of resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, to your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share the peace.
signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who will offer himself for us. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you O Lord Holy Father through Christ our Lord you bid your people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast renew our zeal in faith and life and bring us to the fullness of grace that belongs to the children of God and so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord God of heart and heart, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, in mercy for our fallen world. You gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with the living faith, as he comes to us in his holy supper. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Behold, the Lamb of God takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Thanks be to God.
in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And let us pray. Let us pray. Pour out upon the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the will of those whom you have set to perform that way to Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, beloved, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.